So you know what to do if your patient pulls out their arterial line. It's never fun when your patient rips out their arterial line. There's a lot more pressure in an artery than there is in a vein. And so blood is more likely to spew a lot more than it is from a venous source. The first thing I want to mention is never, ever, ever turn off your arterial line alarm on your monitor. You don't want to turn this alarm off because if your patient accidentally or purposely rips out their arterial line and you're in your other room, you're going to want to be notified that it's pulled out and your monitor is going to be what notifies you. So even if your arterial line isn't accurately working and you're waiting to, for it to get replaced, or maybe you're just haven't had the chance to remove it yet, don't turn off the alarms, even if it's not measuring correctly, just adjust your parameters because again, that is your extra set of eyes and ears when you're in your other patient's room. So if your patient's arterial line is prematurely removed, the first thing you're going to want to do is Call for help and hold pressure. A bleeding artery is not something you can walk away from to go grab supplies and come back because arteries bleed very, very quickly. Even if I didn't have any gauze or anything in the room, I would, with my gloved hands, just go ahead and put some pressure right on that arterial source. That's gonna one, help stop the bleeding, and two, prevent your patient from forming a hematoma, which is bleeding underneath the skin, which can happen very, very quickly, especially with an arterial source. So while I'm holding pressure, I'm gonna have my help bring me some gauze so I can then use some gauze to hold that pressure down. Arteries do bleed longer than veins, and so you're gonna wanna hold pressure for several minutes before you even release to check to see if that bleeding has stopped. Your radial artery typically will stop bleeding within like three to five minutes. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer, but your bigger arteries, like a femoral artery, is going to bleed longer and you could be holding pressure for probably an upwards of like 10, 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Once the bleeding has stopped, I like to usually do a good pressure dressing around the area to keep that pressure on for a little bit longer. And you're gonna wanna keep a good eye to make sure that one, the source doesn't start bleeding again, and two, that your pressure dressing isn't too tight to where now you're compromising perfusion in the patient's hand. So you can check this by testing their cap refill, making sure the coloring still looks good, that it's still warm. And if you want, you can even put a pulse ox on the patient's thumb or index finger, which measures that radial arteries perfusion. And if you have a good pulse ox pleth, then you have perfusion. If your patient has lost a lot of blood and you're walking into a big mess, you're definitely gonna wanna cycle that patient's blood pressure, make sure their blood pressure is okay, and notify the provider of what happened in case you need to do like a hemoglobin check or see if the patient needs a blood transfusion. Hopefully they're not bleeding for that long, but I know things happen and sometimes we are caught up and you know, even a couple minutes that have gone by, your patient's gonna bleed a lot. Once everything's all good and dandy, you're definitely gonna wanna document the incident that happened and chart it. And if your patient needs another arterial line, then you're gonna go forth with getting an order for that. And you're also gonna be wanting to think about, well, what can we do to prevent this from happening again? Does this patient need a sitter? Does this patient, was it just an accident and it got caught on something? Do we need to potentially put mitts on this patient or restrain them if they're actively trying to rip out their lines? And that's what you do if you have an arterial line that's accidentally removed. Let me know if you have any questions.